Right, time now to take a trip down history lane. Some of you may know that the 100th anniversary of the Dublin lockout was commemorated this weekend, but not many know the tale of how two of Ireland's biggest clubs got caught up in it. Tony O'Donoghue went to find out what happened. So this is Ring's End. It's probably one of the most historic areas of Dublin. And it's got a huge sort of football connection as well. Shelburne obviously came from here, Shamrock Rovers as well. But how did this area get all uh, mixed up with the lockout? Football at the time was the working class game. Bohemians and Shelburne were working class clubs. And the lockout is a struggle that involves the working class in Dublin. So inevitably, they would have been dragged into it. Jim Larkin's newspaper, The Irish Worker, it denounces both of these clubs, claiming that there was a player in the ranks of each who is a scab. And he tells the Transport Union members go out to Ring's End, stop the game from happening, and very serious political violence is what follows. Shelburne is playing Bohemians. There are scabs on one of the teams, and you will not be there except as pickets. You missed Friday. It was a scorcher of a day. Me and Dennis were there. There must have been, I'd say, about a thousand of us. And Larkin was giving it the large one, telling everybody to stay strong, to stay together, that this was it. And you know what? I believe him when he says this is it, because I believe we can take no more of it. Now, we did say that none of us should go to that Bowls and Shells match because there was a scab playing by one of the teams. Now, I took that to heart. I'm a big Bowls fan, you know? So we're in Bridge Street now, and that's actually the scene of where a lot of the violence happened. But how did it begin? How did this all begin? Well, there was something in the region of 6,000 people out here to watch the match uh, in Shelburne Park, which is today the location of the Greyhound Stadium. Mm. The problem is, there was also something in the region of 150 people here to stop the match. Right. They were tramway men, yeah. largely, and their families, and they had put a picket on the ground. And this was the source of the violence. Yes. We know that when the Bohemians team were entering the stadium, they were attacked by these tramway men. We know that some of the strikers or the locked out workers actually got into the ground and the players were abused on the pitch. Much of the violence was after the game had kicked off on the streets of Rings End. In a highly charged atmosphere, goals from McLean for Shells and Fred Morrow for Bowes saw the two clubs play out a 1-1 draw. The Irish Times describing the game as a great struggle, though reports differ over whether the match even lasted a full 90 minutes. Big Jim Larkin was a, a powerful man, but how, how on earth did he know that these players were alleged scabs? Well, all we know is that they were denounced the night before the game in a speech at Liberty Hall, mm -hmm. and that they were named in the Irish Worker, the newspaper of Jim Larkin's movement, uh, a newspaper with huge circulation. It named Jack Lowry, Shells player, and Jack Miller, a bohemian, as scabs. Jack Miller! I couldn't believe it! You see, I know him. I used to play football with him up in the temple. I was disgusted. So myself, me brother, and 12 others from this house, we went down to pick it. Now we got there around lunchtime. The game wasn't kicking off the tree, but we wanted to get there early. We wanted to give Miller a piece of our mind, and we seen him going in in his horse-drawn carriage, and we ran after him. Scab! 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 The shame of it was unbelievable. The look on his face. I don't know how that man sleeps at night. What do we know about these guys? Well, neither Jack Miller or Jack Lowry have entered their respective Hall of Fames uh, at their own clubs, but their, their contribution to the history of their respective clubs by being entangled in the lockout, they certainly managed to overshadow the inaugural game here at Shelburne Park. Yes, a very interesting tale indeed, and a great performance there from Lloyd Cooney, who has been starring in a production about it all recently. And by the way, Lloyd should be more than comfortable with the footballing team, as he happens to be Mark Quigley's brother-in-law. So well done to Lloyd and everybody involved.